Hey, this is Steve for ProTechReviewGroup.com and welcome to another tutorial. I'm really excited to uh, share some information with you guys that, um, is, to be honest, is there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet about this, and that is creating buttons uh, from Photoshop for Adobe Encore for DVD menus. Um, the misinformation deals with the equals symbol, which tells... Um, Encore that it's a highlight layer. Um, the misinformation is that equals one is your normal layer, and equals two is your is your uh, highlighted layer, and equals three is your activated layer. That's not true, and I believed that for a long time because that's what I had read. But I was always confused at why I couldn't get the colors to uh, to do what I wanted them to do. So I wanted to take a look at how we could um, fix that problem. So I started reading Adobe's help files and got it all sorted out so I wanted to share that with you today so let's get started um, this first tutorial by the way this is a two-part the first part uh, deals with uh, just the basics and the second part will get in more into the highlight and advanced highlighting layers but uh, let's jump in so here we are in Encore and I think the easiest way and uh, to get our menu into Photoshop is just to open it uh, blank menu or however you want in Encore and then send it to uh, Photoshop so if you don't know how to do that here it is if you go to your general set, you can load a blank menu. I'm going to load a quick menu that I put together. It's in my sets. Um, I'll have a, a separate tutorial later on how to create this menu in case you're interested. But I did it really super quick, so it's not that great of a menu anyway. But uh, double-click it to open my menu, and there we go. This black layer, I would put a uh, photo behind or a video feed or something to that effect. So once you've got your menu loaded, we just right-click in the menu and click Edit Menu in Photoshop. And that'll jump us over to Photoshop. Pixel, that, that's just a warning saying the pixel aspect ratio is not square pixels, basically. It's, it's giving us um, uh, the 1.3 aspect ratio so we can uh, be consistent with our DVD. So here we are in Photoshop, and I like to hit F at least once so we get full screen. Hold spacebar and drag this over, and there we go. So how do we create a button? Well, let me clean up my old layers here, put them into a folder. Uh, the first step we need to do is to create a folder. So I'm going to create a folder, or a group, and I'm going to rename it. Now this is the important part. In order for uh, Encore to recognize this as a button, it needs to be saved with the plus symbol. So a plus, and it has to be in parentheses. So you can call the button whatever you'd like. We'll just call this uh, play, because we're, we're going to do a play button here. So there we go. There's our group. Everything that's part of this button has to be inside of that set, and that's important. So the first step to actually creating the button then, let's let's do text. Some people don't like to do text, and that's okay, but um, I find on most DVD menus I've seen, the text really helps. There's, there's a few where they've done really well without it, but anyway. So here we go. I'm going to call this button play, and we'll just change our font up a little bit, because I'm not real happy with that for a DVD menu. Helvetica. Ta-da, there we go. All right, so we'll put this here. Now, your text layer doesn't have to be named anything special. And uh, as far as color goes, don't worry about what it is. I actually like to do white. Change it to white. Ta-da. Ooh, that doesn't show up very well, does it? Let's do black for today. There we go. Okay, so that's the first step to our button. The second part is that magical little highlight that tells uh, the DVD user that they're on that button right now. So how do we get that? Here's where the confusion comes in. Just trust me on this. Create a new layer and call it equals one. Don't do equals two or equals three. We'll get to that later. Equals one is all you need. And then you can name it whatever you want. I'll just name it highlight. You've got to have parentheses equal one and parentheses. So for my highlight on that layer, I'm just going to make this real generic and create a rectangle. Now, like earlier, do not worry about your colors. We'll worry about that later. I'm on path. We need to make sure that you're select uh, that you've got selected this button up here at the top, which is fill pixels. So I'm just going to create a square for my highlight. I know I'm very original, but there we go. That'll be my magical highlight. And I'm going to create a second button. I'm just going to duplicate this group. Right click, click duplicate group, and I'll call this plus, and I'll call it oh, I don't know chapters. We won't link these buttons today, but then I'm just going to move my uh, button down. I just hit V to get the move tool, and then I'm going to go in and rename my text layer here. T is text layer, and we'll call this chapters. 
So there we go. We've already got a good start going on here. Now, now it's time to jump back into Encore. So I'm just going to do a file save, go back over to Encore, and in Encore now we've got our play and our chapters. Now you don't see the button right now, or I'm sorry, you don't see the highlight right now, and that's because these little switches down here aren't selected. Right now we're in our normal state, so it's showing us what our um, buttons look like when the when the DVD uh, remote's not over that. If you want to see what it's like when something's highlighted, just click this middle button. And if you want to see what it's like when the user hits OK on the menu, it'll show us our activated state. That's this third button here. And right now it's exactly the same. So how do we change the colors to look differently? Well, we're going to go to Menu, and we're going to go to Edit Menu Color Set. Now, here inside the color set also confuses a lot of people, and then I think it's because of there's three groups. There's Highlight Group 1, there's Highlight Group 2, and there's Normal Group. What this means is that the Normal Group is what your button's going to look like normally. So right now we've got Color Set to Automatic, which is just what the colors were brought in by. We want to change this to Menu Default, which means we can update all of this. So I'm going to leave our, our normal group at zero. And by the way, we're looking at number one for all of these. We're looking at normal group, number one, and then highlight group, number one, both sides. Forget highlight group two. Forget two and three here. Just one normal, and then one for highlight group one. So I'm going to leave number one at zero opacity, because I don't want anything to show up here on my buttons when we're in our normal state. You could do that. Some people do that, and there, there are cases for that. But right now is not that time. Our highlight group, though, I'm going to go ahead and boost this to 100% opacity, and I'm going to change my color. By the way, I want to preview this. Normal state, there's nothing. If I were to change this to 80%, now we've got a, a black bar, or 100%, back to zero. Selected state, though, let's preview our selected state, and let's change this color to, oh, red for now, just for fun, and there we go. Likewise, the activated state, again, when the user hits OK on the menu, I'm going to make this 100%, and we'll make this a different color. Let's just make it stand out. Let's do yellow. Um, switch our button mode here to activated. Boom, it's yellow. That doesn't show up very well. I don't like that, so I'm going to change to pink. And there we go. So we've got our normal state, our uh, highlighted state, and our activated state. So those are the three different states. Now, one other question is, a lot of menus you see, instead of a highlight button, the text changes colors. The, the way to do that is incredibly simple. You don't have to play with different layers and different colors. All you do is we're going to go to our uh, play button, and then right in here in the button um, palette, there's a uh, thing you can click on called Create Text Subpicture. Make sure that's checked, and go ahead and do that for both layers. And it's already done that with these colors we have set now. So if I show you our um, selected subpicture highlight state, boom, they're going to turn red, and they're going to turn pink when I do activate it. So now they're all changing. Um, we could do away with that highlight block altogether if we wanted because of that, and that's okay too. Um, and again, you have full control over that in menu, edit menu color set, and we can change any of these colors we want. Um, let's change our red to yellow. There we go ugly but you get the point. Now you'll notice that the uh, words and the text, I'm sorry, now you'll notice the words and the highlight block are the same color and there's no difference. Um, is it possible to change so that those are different? Yes, and that's what we're going to take a look at in the second part of this tutorial. For now I've covered everything that we need to cover in the basic part of this tutorial. In part two we'll take a look at all those things I talked about. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Check out part two for more information and uh, more clarification on what the equals sing, uh, equal symbols means. And check out our website, www.protechreviewgroup.com, for tutorials and uh, product reviews and for written versions of this tutorial. So um, maybe that will help you understand even better. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.